Right, what's up guys? I thought I'd just um, explain a bit about why I think you should have a balance between normal dreams and lucid dreams. Um, because I think it's important, you know, just if you're going to start learning this, that you bear in mind that you don't have to lucid dream all the time, right? And I think it's important because not only will it tire you out, but you'll also get a bit, you know, tired of the idea of lucid dreaming, you'll get tired of practicing the methods. But more, more importantly than that, okay, you won't have the chance to experience normal dreams. And I think a really important part of the whole dreaming scenario, the whole ability to be able to dream, is that you can look at your normal dreams and analyze them. And while you can do that with lucid dreaming in real time, you can't interact with the dream in the same way because you're affecting it. You know, it's like you're, you're controlling it, obviously, that's what lucid dreaming is, right? You're being able to guide the dream in the direction you choose. But by doing that, you change the dream itself. And some would argue that that's, you know, moving it from what it was going to be to what you're making it. And this is one of the paradoxes with time travel. Um, and one of the main sort of, I guess, problems with lucid dreaming is that by doing it, you're actually affecting the dream in a way that you're changing what would have happened naturally. And when you do that, you lose the ability to analyse what would naturally happen and instead you can only analyse what you do, essentially, what, in what you do in a dream. An example would be, say if you were to dream about something chasing you, like a dragon chasing you, right? In a normal dream, the dragon would chase you and then maybe it would lead you into a garden, there'll be a maze or something and you'd find a treasure chest and open the chest and there's some sort of film inside and you can wake up and remember that and then analyse the dream signs for what they mean to you. Whereas if you were lucid and you just were chased by a dragon and then said to the dragon, stop chasing me, then you've changed the dream. You then wouldn't go on and find that maze or that treasure chest and you would instead have an interaction with the dream uh, and the dragon in that case. And some would argue that, you know, that you're, by doing that, you're losing the ability to analyse the dream for what it naturally would have been and instead you're controlling it. So I think it's really important as lucid dreamers that we have a balance right, between normal dreams and lucid dreams. You need to be able to analyse what your mind would naturally dream about, what your subconscious mind would naturally consolidate, how it would consolidate your memories in deep sleep and how you would actually have that experience, be able to wake up and remember that dream. That needs to be separate to the lucid dreaming side of things where you're in, in the driver's seat and you're guiding the dream in the direction you would like it to go. So it's very easy to do this. As with nootropics, you can cycle. You can say, OK, well, I'm going to have five days off lucid dreaming and then two days on. Obviously with nootropics, there are a type of smart drug you can take. You would typically take five days on and two days off. But I think with lucid dreaming, it's better or easier, especially for beginners, to have five days of normal dreams and then two days of lucid dreams. About that sort of ratio. And I was recently invited to be, be a, a podcast guest on The Dream Show, which will be released very soon. And this is one of the main points we talked about, is that it's very important to have a balance between normal dreams and lucid dreams. Even if you are an expert lucid dreamer, and even if you know you want to have lucid dreams, right, it's still healthy, and in a way I would argue better to have a balance. So hopefully this has been helpful, and I'll see you next time.